Hi, I'm Paris, and I have two main issues that have kept me from going out hiking and visiting state high points. One is arthritis in my hips and especially my right knee, and the other one is a medication, a beta blocker that I'm on to keep the heart rhythms down. So when I saw a review of this, I had to get one to try out, see if it can get me back out hiking like I would like to. They call it an exoskeleton. I would call it bionic legs. This is made by a company called Hypershell. They're in China. It was made in collaboration with the university there. And I think I'm pretty much their target demographic. I'm someone who really wants to get out there and be more active, but I need a little bit of help. This is their Pro X model, their mid-range exoskeleton. Pretty pricey, more than I wanted to spend, but when I heard about the tariffs going in that could double the price of it, I decided I was gonna get one and see if it'll work for me. They package it up very nicely. It has its own shipping suitcase that it comes in, which tells you about the bulkiness of it. Not so heavy. Let's have a look. Here's what comes in the box. It's the large piece that straps around your hips. The bars that go down to straps that attach to your legs. The battery, an extra battery, charging cable, and the user manual. Ooh, well, they said it's about four pounds. It definitely feels like some pounds. You can get an idea of how it's going to attach to me. And it has lots of electronics in it. It monitors your motions and basically helps you make them. It takes off about 65 pounds of your weight, the equivalent of that, to help lift your legs through each step. This has a downhill and downstairs mode, but I'm not sure how much this will help my knees out coming down, if it'll take the strain off. But I thought if it takes the strain off going up, my muscles are gonna be in much better shape to hold my knees together coming down. Lots of experimenting ahead to see how well this works. One battery is already attached to the device and they include a second battery. From what I've read, if you use the exoskeleton in lower power assist mode, it can go about 10 miles. If you ramp it up to maximum assist and you're going up a steep incline, you get about two miles out of one battery. So there's the weight that's gonna sit on my lower back and the, the leg portion of it, the attachment point looks to be just above my knees. The high point climbs and hikes that I want to do are at most about eight miles round trip and between 1,000 and 3,000 feet elevation gains. So the question is not only can this help get me up to the top, can I get back down from there? Those have been my two main concerns with the reduced heart rate and the arthritis is how much can I hold up? I would prefer to do this hiking without extra assistance, but I'm not going out hiking to set any records or to get my name in some book. I'm going out for my own enjoyment, my own health, and even if this is what it takes to get me up to the top and back down, I'll still feel like I've accomplished that climb. Time to read the instructions thoroughly, charge up the battery, then strap it on and hit the trail. I did set this up at home and you do have to make it snug. Okay. The battery is back here. The battery is back here. The control unit is here, but it can also be controlled from an app on the phone. And I've got to strap these bars to just above my knees. This is what's going to provide the motion, lifting, my, helping me lift my legs when I go hiking. And I'm going to start walking. And yeah, I, I feel a little bit, it, it took a second to kick in, but I feel it's helping to lift my leg. And when I put one leg down, it sort of pushes against that leg to help lift the other leg. So that's the way it works. I don't know if you can see my legs being kind of yanked up as I walk, but that's the effect that the exoskeleton has. It did fit in this bag, so I can take it with me. The thing with uh, the hiking is I really want it for going, of course, uphill and downhill. I don't really need it for, um, for going on the level or for just slight inclines. So I'd rather carry it in this until I get to the point that's steep. There we go. It's off. Okay, now I'm going to try without any assistance, but still wearing this.
I forgot how to walk. That's so weird. It was having such an effect. I didn't realize it when I was using it. Now my legs feel all weird. I don't remember what normal is. Okay. Okay, it's coming back to me now. I remember how to walk. And it feels different walking. Is this harder? Maybe it really was making a difference. I was making it easier. I can tell right now. I'm like, where's the lift? Wow, it really was. I didn't appreciate it at the time. Let me see if I turn it back on. Okay, now we're in maximum eco mode. Let me go down and come back up. Oh, there we go. Okay, I kind of like that. Here we go. Pull me up this hill. Oh my gosh, this is so much easier than doing it without it. How did I not notice that? And this is just in, in middle mode without even being in turbo. Yeah, I was just focused on how it's a different gait than I'm used to, but um, it really does make going up the hill easier. My poor camera person's having to do it manually. <laughs> Here at Black Mesa, Oklahoma. Okay, gonna activate this, go up, levels one, two, three, four, and then turbo. Okay, going to level two. Okay, level three. Level four. Hardly winded. Okay, time for turbo mode. Turbo mode, maximum turbo four. Here we go. Whoa, pull me up this hill. I highly recommend this. heavy no that was in turbo two and oh man this is the way to hike hi this is Point, Oklahoma here we go they're hyper shell and I am wearing them I am wearing them right now my exoskeleton you would not believe how much easier it made getting up to the top and wearing this. And these are really, really an amazing device. And I'd say it was a oh, better part of two hours to get to here and had a little snack and a lunch and about to head back down. I'm going to test out the uh, Hypershell Exoskeleton again, this time to see how it is for my knees going down the incline. Here's the steep part. Got the bionic legs on in turbo mode. seems to be doing something but it's kind of weird I set it manually in the app for going downhill and so I, it definitely it's lifting my legs a little but I thought it would like sort of slow down each step down I don't know my knees are still good and I'm almost halfway down so that's a good thing but I can't quite figure out what it's doing on uh, downhill mode I'm gonna try downhill mode a little bit more then I'll put it on adaptive and see how good it is at recognizing I'm going downhill here in the app, you can see the modes that you can manually set the hypershell for. This is in adaptive mode. You can see it was really high stepping me, but when I switched to coming downhill, it's, it's much gentler, but it's not quite the same as when I set it to downhill manually. Made it down from the top of Black Mesa, Oklahoma, the highest point in the state. Used the hypershell for getting up it was great for coming down needs a little work on the app when I chose downhill it did help I could feel that with the knees when I left it on adaptive uh, it was kind of fighting me when I would if I was stepping a certain way it would try to move my legs like I was going uphill it would really lift the legs but going downhill you want much less of that so when I put it in downhill mode it did help my knees are both still working 
got two miles to get to the car, but I'll see how I am when I get there and how my knees feel tomorrow. Here are my steps for the day of that climb. And you can see my heart rate during the climb, keeping under 130, just like my doctor likes. So it's been four days since the climb, and I can tell you when I got back to the parking lot, knees were fine. Next day, sore all over, but knees were fine. Knees are still fine. So I consider that a big win for the Hypershell Exoskeleton. The question though about did it really help the knees when I was going down? Still unclear on that. I think it helped most because it kept my leg muscles fresh going up. So coming down, they were able to hold the knee in the proper position so that I didn't have the extra strain, didn't have the extra pain. Either way, it's a win. What questions do I still have? Well, one I'm hoping to solve soon, I'd like to know, instead of just going up a relatively level incline, 15, 20% or so, what if it's cut into steps like going over large stones? The motion with the legs is a lot different doing that kind of climbing. It's a lot of really lifting the legs. I use the trekking poles a lot when I'm doing that, and I really wanna see how much this will help with that kind of climbing. So, Guadalupe Peak, highest point in Texas, qualifies as that kind of a climb. I am a little concerned that this might get me up further then the knees can get me back down, but I might just climb it halfway just to see what this will do for that kind of large step. Also looking at climbing Black Elk Peak in South Dakota and working my way up to Wheeler's Peak and Humphreys Peak in New Mexico and Arizona. But those are some really big ones. Might be a few months before I get to those. But when I do, I'll be recording it, finding out more about how well this works, if it really is the next thing for older climbers, for people who have mobility issues, but who wanna keep moving. So I'll be recording what happens. I may even be going live on TikTok again. You can follow me at ParisTX on TikTok and other social media. And I'll see you from on high on the next review. There are so many choices and you don't want to stress. You want your health, food, and home receiving only the best. That's what we're here for. We give honest reviews. Paris DX.